Um, thanks very much for the invitation and opportunity to talk to a new bunch of people. Uh, I thought I'd just start with something fortuitous. We were um, sitting at a table with Alan Lawrenson, who happens to be a author of this book that we just purchased. So let me start with chapter five. Other than for water, coal has been the most important commodity used by mankind for thousands of years. Over the past 200 years, it's been the greatest contributor to enhancing the lives and lifestyle of everyone on the planet that has had access to it. The great industrial revolution that began in the middle of the 19th century would not have happened if cheap and plentiful coal had not been available. There you go. So that was some free uh, support for us. So thanks very much, Alan. I look forward to reading the entire book. All right, now on to Terracom. Um, who is Terracom? Terracom's a listed company. We've got a global footprint uh, in both uh, Australia and South Africa. We're a rena renowned low-cost producer and we currently have a market cap of about 156 million and a share price of about 19 and a half cents. If I look back two years ago, our share price was over a dollar uh, and nothing really fundamental has changed inside our business apart from the commodity price that we are currently receiving. So we have a very stable business model. The top 20 uh, shareholders hold about 60% of our register and have been long supporters of the company. And with that, management and directors uh, own about 2.7% of the company. The company at a glance, as I said, we've got producing, development and exploration assets both in Australia and South Africa. Uh, in Australia, up in the central Queensland area in a little town called Claremont. And in South Africa, our producing assets are in and around Middleburg, Belfast, and townships of Delmas. The Blair Athol is our flagship operation. It's really the bedrock of our business. Blair Athol is our producing mine up in Claremont and Queensland, does about 1.8 million tonnes of export grade thermal coal low impurity, low ash, so very well sought after coal. Life of mine at Blair Athol continues for another eight years and coincidentally the first coal was exploited from the Blair Athol coal fields in 1864, uh, small underground operations, so it's been producing coal for an extremely long time and it comes to its finite life in about eight years time. Uh, Blair Athol alone produces 50 to $65 million EBITDA per annum at current cost profile and current revenues, uh, meaning that we're a three times EBITDA organisation just out of our Australian operations. We have an experienced board and management. I've been at the helm of Terracom for coming up to six years now, and I've been in the resources industry with some reputable organisations in Queensland and also in Western Australia for coming on to three decades uh, now. So experienced operations uh, and local boy grew up in central Queensland. The Terracom timeline, if I look back, Terracom was listed as Guildford Coal in 2010 and then the name was changed sometime around 2015 and Blair Athol was purchased uh, for a dollar from Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto had placed the mine into care and maintenance in 2012. Um, they had taken out largely the, the large economic seams as they saw it, placed the mine into care and maintenance and undertook a, a sale process. And we were fortunate enough to come along and buy the entire mine, the equipment, the assets, the infrastructure for one dollar. Of course, we also inherited a $80 million rehabilitation liability which we've uh, progressed very well um, to this date and continue to do on a, on a regular basis. In 2020, and I call this the decade of determination, so listed in 2010, there's a lot of phones pinging around here. So it's, it's good. 
So in 2020, Blair Athol, we became owner-operator, and that's important to note because I've already heard today twice about being a low-cost producer, and it's important that we've got our own hands on the steering wheel. So all of the operations that we do at our Blair Athol mine in central Queensland are owner-operator. We don't have any contractors, and therefore we're across our costs on a daily basis. 2022-23, on the back of record coal prices at around $450 a tonne for thermal coal, we were able to transform our balance sheet. So we paid down in that 18 month period about $260 million Australian in debt. We're currently sitting debt free and we also paid out $240 million in dividends um, over that period of time. We haven't paid a dividend since June 2023. Uh, we've been dealing with some other financial matters that we've had to look at from a historic tax debt. However, we should resume to normal programming uh, very soon. We've got a fairly transparent dividend policy where we return 60 to 90 per cent of available cash to shareholders on a regular basis and at the moment our dividend policy is on a quarterly cadence. So sitting here today, we're debt free, we're focused and we're ready to grow. On demand, the uh, outlook we believe is, is very solid for us and our coal type out to 2030 and beyond, which sees out the current life of mine of our producing asset in Queensland. Um, our coal uh, is well sought after in the energy market. It's low impurity and low ash, and therefore its value and use becomes a higher proposition for power generating companies. Uh, the energy transition is delayed. This book's going to confirm that for me. Uh, and as a coal managing director, I'm certainly a believer in coal. The uh, coal-fired generation capacity, particularly in Asia, is increasing. And um, we've just partnered with a Chinese energy giant, uh, Windtime, and I've recently visited their operations in China and their currently building a 10 million tonne per annum underground coal mine for domestic coal-fired power station use. And they intend to take the coal from the coal fields that they own in Queensland, which we'll develop for them, directly back to their own power station in China on the Yangtze River. So as I said, our primary markets are consistent, being Japan, Korea, and into sponge iron market into uh, India, are very, very solid through to 2030 and beyond. Our vision for Terracom, uh, BA's or Blair Athol's life of mine is 2032. It will sit there as our bedrock and just underpin everything we do. It'll churn out in simplistic terms, two shipments of coal per month for the rest of its days. And then it actually exhausts its available resources. So Blair Athol doesn't become uneconomic. It just runs out of coal. The physical resources at Blair Athol have been exploited by 20. 32. That doesn't mean that's the end for Blair Athol. The deal that we've just penned with the Chinese energy giant will see Blair Athol's infrastructure used for another 30 years beyond Blair Athol's life. That's infrastructure, power, water, waste management, rehabilitation and equipment that is currently available for use at the Blair Athol mine will be repurposed and used to develop the Moorlands project, which is within 15 kilometres of Blair Athol, and give longevity not only to the shareholders of the organisation, but the community where we operate, which is a great story. The strategic partnership that I've touched on with the Chinese energy giant Windtime will see us uh, develop, manage and operate the Moorlands project. That'll add initially 1.9 million tonnes per annum of capacity to our portfolio with a ramp up to 4 million tonnes and then subject to environmental regulations, that mine could go up to 8 to 10 million tonne in a staged period of time. The commercial deal structure of that will be finalised uh, by Christmas. We've announced to the market that we are currently in negotiations 
and intend to announce what that looks like and what that would mean to shareholders when we do pen that deal. The global development that we talked about with wind time will see us looking at complementary markets in resources, renewable energy and other related market areas. So they have other assets in Australia that we will look at. Um, we like bulks, bulks are easy, bulks are predictable and um, we'll stick to the bulk coals, whether it's met coal, thermal coal, whether we go into bauxite iron ore, will depend on what opportunities present. We're currently on the lookout for uh, thermal and met coal opportunities in our backyard and running the rule over some of those. Um, all of our development that we do has the first hurdle being that the dividend flow from Blair Athol cash flows must be maintained so that whilst we go and develop new operations, we don't, I guess, turn off the dividend stream. We find a way to fund projects that provide our shareholders current and new with the ability to receive dividends out of the cash flows generated from our Blair Athol uh, mining operation. South Africa for us, I did touch on it, but it's, it's an interesting place to operate. I happen to be sitting beside a couple of South African chaps at the table. They know the place very well, it's quite challenging. The biggest opportunity for us is to get more export coal onto the seaborne coal market. That is starting to improve. Uh, there's some rail infrastructure and rail freight rolling stock issues that are being overcome. We're going to commentate on that on our quarterly release, including the um, Q&A that I do that suggests that we are seeing some improvement both in the reliability of the network and the ability for the rail provider to move tonnes to the export market, which is where all of the upside profits are made. Internally in South Africa, our business supplies the power generator Eskom. That's a fixed margin business, so it offers an annuity stream, but the real horsepower and profit is generated from our export coal, which will get up to about a million tonnes a year when we get to our solid run rate. So in closing, um, our company is underpinned by our people and it's driven by our values of passion, partnership, and performance and I guess being a producer we've got a long runway for people to come in and entrust their well-earned money with us to earn some returns and be part of our growth story so thank you very much. Thank you.